The TrekWorks YouTube channel is sponsored by HDA Modelworks, suppliers of scale lighting products, detail accessory parts, and complete model kits. Visit HDAModelworks.com today. Welcome back everybody. Boyd here with you again. Well, we uh, had a lot of uh, positive response to the uh, first video we did there a couple days ago about uh, talking about the basics of getting into scale modeling, working on plastic model kits, some of the supplies that you're going to need if you're a beginner, or coming back to the hobby after a little bit of an absence. So we're continuing on with part two here. This is again the basics. We're going to make a few videos later on that are going to kind of move up the ladder a little bit and get to more of some of the advanced stuff like lighting and airbrushing and things like that but this guide is just for the basic beginner who wants to get started and uh, the goal of this video is to show you what you can get the basic supplies you'll need with uh, you know uh, the least amount of money and and you don't really need to get anything besides this to get a good solid start on, on uh, building scale models so we left off in the first video with doing assembly now we're moving on to uh, actual you know painting of the model so uh, this is something that you want to um, pay a lot of attention to because painting is uh, one of the most critical parts about finishing a model. If you if you uh, do a great job on assembly, but do a you know you wind up with not a very good paint job, it can really take away from the from the look of the model overall, and a lot of people notice it when they look at it. So um, we start off here all the way on the left again with uh, basically after I get the model finished. Uh, and it's still in bare plastic with you know with nothing but the uh, the uh, putty on there. I'll spray a coat of this adhesion promoter on top of that before I start with any kind of primer or any kind of paint. It only requires uh, you know a nice even thin layer of this. You don't have to spray it on there really thick. You don't need multiple coats. Uh, you wait until it's completely dry. You don't want to spray anything on there while it's still tacky. This stuff dries really fast. It dries in about the same amount of time if you've used like testers dull coat or testers gloss. About the same amount of time as that about in about 75 degrees or 80 degrees it'll dry in about 15 20 minutes um, and you can tell when it's dry it'll turn to a nice semi gloss this is a clear finish so you can actually use this if you want at the very end of your build too if you want a semi gloss finish on there and you know semi gloss clear coat it dries with a nice smooth texture and everything uh, and it doesn't you know it's not sticky or anything like that uh, it's a nice matte finish if you want to, you know, there's nothing wrong at all with using that as your final coat. It works great. Uh, it won't yellow or anything like that over time. It's just really good stuff. But what this basically does is give you a, a much better bond, uh, you know, between the uh, surface of the plastic and the paint and the primer and everything in between. Uh, it's formulated to do that. It will... Um, it's not always necessary if for example if I'm going to be doing a scale model car and I'm going to paint, uh, I know I'm going to be painting the body all one color like red or something like that uh, and I'm not going to do any masking on it at all uh, this is probably not needed if you've done a good job prepping the model sanding it and you use a good quality primer you probably will never have an issue the paints not going to peel off later on or anything like that but if you have an, a situation where you're going to be uh, using masking tape like over here and pulling it off and on the surface, you know, putting tension on it, you have the potential of paint being peeled up, and that's always a disaster. It's not the easiest thing to go back and fix it, and it's really hard to get it to go back and look as it did, you know, as good as it did originally. So you try to avoid that whenever possible. Uh, you know, I always take this extra step here because I'm often painting on, you know, sci-fi models and things like that that have a lot of panel details that you have to shade. So I'm using a lot of masking tape, and so... I'm definitely going to use some of this when I start out. but um, So you've got that laid down. So we're moving on to the next step here, and then we get into our primers. That's what will go on directly over top of this. We have a couple different primers I have here. Now this uh, Tamiya surface primer is something that somebody gave me. You can see it's still in the plastic. I have never used it. Uh, I have no doubt in the world that it's a really, really good product. Uh, a lot of people out there absolutely love this stuff. They say it's some of the best, best primer they've used. Um, uh, but my problem with it is, is that it comes in this small can, and I do a lot of bigger, larger models, so I'd go with this, through this stuff like crazy. And uh, it's pretty expensive for the size that you get. It's about 10 bucks for this bottle right here, or this can, I should say. So it's kind of on the expensive side, and, you know, I'm not a rich guy. I'm always looking for products that are, uh, you know, affordable, and yet they do a good job. You know, I'm always looking around trying to find things that work or substitutes for some of the, the other stuff, you know, and... Uh, there are a lot of products out there that you can use in scale modeling that aren't made by 
specific model hobby companies. That's one thing that you need to be aware of if you're new to the hobby. You don't have to buy products that are specifically, you know, sold by hobby suppliers and things like that. You can buy, like this is an automotive paint or an automotive primer. So, again, this is good stuff, I have no doubt. But I've been using this uh, Duplicolor probably for the last um, five or six years. They changed the, uh, you know, the... The artwork on the can here but it's basically the same stuff they keep coming out with it it's a lacquer based primer which i prefer uh i think lacquer based primer sands a little bit better um it seems to be very stable as far as um i've sprayed literally every kind of paint imaginable on top of it not any problem with any kind of a reaction uh you know i've used water-based paints i've used solvent based i've used acrylics i've used lacquers i've had no problem whatsoever uh, it covers very 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 well um, it dries fast and it dries very smooth. It's a really smooth primer. Um, they say that it's a high build, but it's not thick like it sounds like. It won't bury like small details. Of course, if you spray a lot of coats, it will. But if you just use it normally, one or two coats is all you're going to ever need to cover up your putty and everything else. And um, it's up to you whether you want to sand it or not afterwards to smooth it out. If you're going to be doing a really nice, like super glossy, uh, car body or something like that I would recommend you sand it but if you're gonna just do general stuff you know uh, armor builds uh, you know aircraft uh, tanks ships things like that you don't need to sand it at all it, it dries that smooth where a nice coat of paint over the top of it you're not gonna see all that texture on there um, so it's a really good uh, you know quality and th again this is a 12 ounce can compared to this small can here and uh, this cans about seven bucks at my local I buy this at, at O'Reilly's it's available at AutoZone, and, and you can, of course, buy it online. And uh, so it's a, it's a much better bargain, and it basically does the same thing. It's a really good quality, um, and you can spray it right out of the can. You know, like I said, it comes in a nice aerosol. So that's the primer I primarily use, and I think it'll work for just about anything you want to use out there or that you're working on. You won't have any problems with it. Um, so moving on to some of the paints now. Now, again, this is the basics video, so... Uh, we're not talking about somebody who has an airbrush here or any of that, you know, kind of thing. You're talking about somebody who is just going to be doing basic painting. Maybe they live in an apartment, they can't use an airbrush, or they're just getting started and they don't want to, you know, they haven't gotten all that extra stuff yet. So, uh, of course, we have our regular spray cans here, which are going to be the best alternative for most people in that situation. You know, you've got your testers. You've got several brands out there. Testers is a well-known, established company. Their paints are pretty good. They're pretty stable. Uh, they're still fairly reasonable priced, and they're readily available. They have a multitude of different colors. You've got all your colors, of course, and then you've got your top finishes, whether you want to go with a dull or a, a, a clear coat. If you're going to go with their gloss, I recommend the, uh, especially on a model car, I recommend the, the brand they have called Extra or the Wet Look. It's a little bit better than their regular gloss. Uh, their regular gloss gives a nice kind of a, uh, medium between matte and super glossy look I would say it's not as nice of a gloss as like a 2k automotive clear coat but it, it gives a nice gloss uh, and you can always polish on it too they're lacquer based and you know get it to look a little bit better but uh, those are what's available for you know people at the entry level where you're just going to be able to use spray cans and things but we have these craft acrylic paints which are an excellent alternative one, they're becoming more and more popular. They're very affordable. They're very good quality. They're acrylic, so they dry it with a nice hard shell. They're a good, durable paint that'll last a long time. Don't be uh, fooled thinking they're poor quality just because they're inexpensive. You can actually go online. Uh, they have sales from time to time. I buy these online at HobbyLobby.com, and they often have a sale on these where you can get these for 59 cents a bottle. And if you buy enough of them, they give you free shipping, too. So I'll buy like 10 at a time. And that's very affordable. I mean, I can only buy one can of this stuff for the same. I can get, you know, 10 different colors. Of course, you got to dilute this stuff down, reduce it so it's thinner, so you can spray it. Or even if you're going to brush it, you want to, you know, you want to reduce it a little bit. Now, I've seen people out there in this hobby that have taken a paintbrush and painted a scale model car body and made it look fantastic. Uh, because this paint doesn't leave a lot of brush stroke lines in it it'll actually dry pretty smooth you come back over that with a nice coat of clear or whatever you got your options like your testers in the can here you got some of this all clad aqua gloss which a lot of people are using the future floor wax or floor polish this product here is almost identical to that even though it's got that kind of white milky look to it when it dries it's perfectly clear but the properties of this are almost the same as that uh, future floor polish 
you can spray it or brush it. Uh, it dries nice and fast, and it needs, leaves a nice glossy finish on the top, and it's water-based, so it cleans up. It's non-toxic. You know, if you've got issues with uh, being allergic to toxic things and stuff like that, it doesn't stink. You know, when you spray it, it's got a nice, you know, it has some smell to it, but it doesn't overpower you like some of the, you know, automotive 2K clear. You definitely want to use a respirator and be in a ventilated area if you spray that. That's some extremely powerful stuff, but it's it gives a, you know, the best gloss finish available when you finish with it. Um, so let's say you want to use some of this uh, craft acrylic paint here and you don't have an airbrush. Well, they do make a little aerosol bottle that you can buy at Home Depot. It's basically a, a glass jar at the very bottom that you put your paint in. It's got a siphon deal in there. And it's got on the upper half, it's got a little small aerosol canister with a, you know, push button spray nozzle. And uh, I've, I've tried a couple of those a long time ago. And if you thin your paint properly and everything, they actually work pretty darn good. Now, you're not going to spray a nice, you know, you can't use it to do weathering and stuff because it won't spray a really nice fine little detail spray you know that's more in the line of an airbrush but for just general spraying of a car body or a, or a model of any kind um, it works excellent and you can get quite a quite a quite a bit of mileage out of one of those small little aerosol bottles uh, and it's just compressed air it's not actually aerosol either so you're not spraying chemicals in the air like I said if you're sensitive to that kind of thing or you're in an area where you can't breathe in a lot of fumes or you know an apartment or something like that or in the house um, it works great so you can use these paints for that now the one thing that I do recommend that's critical is that anytime you use this paint especially if you're gonna spray it you have to strain it it'll it'll have small little particles in the paint from settling on the shelf or whatever so you have to uh, first pour a little bit in a cup and then mix it with your water get it kind of reduced down to where you want it for you know your spraying capability and then run it through a strainer and put it in another cup and and spray from that batch and that'll eliminate like 99% of the problems you have of the airbrush clogging up or if you're going to use one of those little emitters like I talked about it won't clog that up and you'll be just fine so they have literally hundreds of colors available any color you can imagine they have they even have some great metallics and coppers and silvers and iridescents and everything in between so uh, that's a really great option these days inexpensive you can get these at Hobby Lobby Walmart has a great selection, you know, almost anywhere you can think of, they have it. So that's a great option. Here we have the old school testers enamels. A lot of these have gone to acrylic now. Uh, I, keep, I keep a few of these around just for painting small little detail parts. If I'm going to paint, you know, uh, the lug nuts on a, on, a, on a wheel or something, you know, some really small stuff. I tend not to like to use enamels. They're kind of an old-fashioned paint these days, and enamel breaks down over time. That's why acrylic came along. Acrylic is a much more durable paint. If you look at any old, you know, uh, antique toys or anything like that that have been painted with enamel, you see all the little spiderweb cracks, and the, the paint begins to fade, you know, the color fades out. They're oil-based, and so that what happens is that oil dries up over time, and then there's nothing left, and it just starts to let go. Acrylics won't do that. Acrylics are a modern, you know, uh, engineering upgrade over that so but they have their uses like I said if they're gonna be on small little tiny areas you know and some people still use them for almost everything and if they're happy with it, that's fine but I've just kind of found that out over time and and uh, you know but they do have a lot of colors and uh, sometimes if that's your only option you know it's not a bad way to go especially since they've gone now to the acrylic versions that's a little bit better than the old enamel was so you can think about that. Now we got some paint brushes here. Um, I just go out and buy these multi-packs here at my local Hobby Lobby. Uh, they have some good quality brands there. I tend to buy not the cheapest ones they have and not the most expensive ones. Uh, you know, it is true that if you buy a really high quality brush, you do get a little bit better result. But I found that these, um, these middle priced ones are just as good as the high priced ones. Uh, this pack here might have cost me like 12 bucks. But you've got all the different, you know... You got some really now. I picked this one because it had a lot of the really nice little fine, uh, fine tipped brushes in there. But another pack might have you know a selection of more fine, medium, and broad brushes. And uh, you know I go through a lot of paint brushes. I try to take good care of them. That's an important thing you want to do. Whenever you finish with a brush, don't let the paint dry on it. Clean it up right away. Store it where it's not touching on the brushes. You know with the tips facing up, and you won't have a problem. You'll get a lot of uses out of most, even the cheap ones. But uh, I've noticed that on the cheaper ones that the hairs aren't as fine. And so after you use them a couple times, they start to flare out a little bit and get a little bit, you know, 
a little bit ragged looking where these will last a little longer but I go through paintbrushes like crazy I'm you know it's just because I build so many models but uh, for the basic person just doing one model a month or even one model a year or whatever it might be um, these will last you a long long time so get you some decent quality brushes and uh, you'll be happy with that we've got our basic tape over here for masking this is the 3m uh, what they call blue painters tape I prefer the old original what they call the original type they've come out with some newer ones that have what they call the edge lock and all that stuff I found that they don't actually work as good as these uh, you guys have seen a lot of the models that I've painted on my channel here where I've done my own striping and things like that or panel lines and I get really nice clean edges I don't have problems with bleed through and everything I'm using this kind of tape it's just basic um, the trick to the painting though is that you when you're gonna mask and paint an edge like that you don't put a really wet heavy coat of paint on that you you know you build it up in layers with really fine coats so that that first coat especially when it hits it dries almost right away so that it it forms a little seal right there and it's not so thick that it'll get a chance to seep in any kind of little you know spot you might have loose edge on your tape or whatever and that will save you a lot of headache there's also um, a bunch of smaller little tapes from Tamiya and different companies you know finer uh, really thin super you know for pin striping and you can get that in both paper or vinyl the vinyl is great for making curves and things like that and uh, if you're gonna make curves and stuff you start off with that and then you back it up with some of this tape you know because this tape won't make sharp turns or anything without wrinkling but this is all available at local you know Home Depot Hobby Lobby Walmart and again just for some reason I've tried it out and just the old original uh, basic blue painters tape seems to still work really really good it sticks really good uh, it's not too sticky where it'll leave residue on your paint or anything like that it usually pulls off nice and clean and you don't have to worry about it the other stuff with that lock edge and some of that I've just seen that it it's just not it's not the same I've had some of that actually leak when it's supposed to be an improvement and it doesn't it you can feel it with your fingers it's not as sticky as this stuff is so there's your tape now um, We've got here a couple of colors I'm showing here. Now, for example, if I'm going to be doing a, a, a lighted Enterprise model and I'm going to light block it from the inside, that's an important step. We need to spray from the inside to keep the light from leaking out and, you know, through the plastic in areas we don't want to see it. So my point for showing you this is, is if you're going to be using it for that, don't buy the expensive paint. This is 99 cents a can. This is flat black. This is about $1.10 a can at Home Depot. I'm using flat black and flat white. I put about two or three coats. Now for your, your main light blocking, which is the black, I make sure I did a really good job spraying that on, you know, covering everything. And I'll probably put two or three coats. I'll hold the part up to a bright light and see if I can see light leaking through it. You know, once I'm good there, I'm good. And, you know, 99 cents a can, I can use a lot of that stuff. I come back and I just lightly dust over all that when that's dry with this white, um, and that doesn't have to be perfect because that's not your light blocking. You're just spraying a little bit of that in there to get the light to be able to bounce around a little bit easier. And it helps make everything look more evenly lit. You know, I've shown that, talked about that little tip several times over the years on these model builds I've done, especially when you're doing lighting. And I prefer the flat because it just dries faster. It dries really fast, especially if I, you know, use my heat gun on it or a hair dryer. It'll dry almost instantly. So, you know, again, just the point of showing that here is that don't go out and buy the expensive stuff. You're not going to see it on on the inside of the model. It doesn't have to dry nice and you know perfectly smooth or anything like that. If you get a couple runs in it or whatever, no big deal. It's just there to block light and then uh, help bounce light around. So um, that's the basic here, guys. Everything I can think of here for uh, basically getting you started uh, painting, you know, and you'll be off to the races. You'll be able to take care of you know 99% of. Uh, basic car building tank building armor you know airplanes sci-fi whatever you want and you don't have a super huge investment now we're going to come back in the next video after this and the series and we'll get into some more of the advanced stuff i'm going to talk about airbrushing and and some things like that and you know getting into some of that where you're getting more serious about modeling now you're you're liking it you're having fun and you're going to start building a lot of models and it's worth it to go out and get you know better equipment if you're going to be doing that so uh, we'll do some LED lighting after that and a few other things, uh, maybe a little bit of scratch building techniques and, you know, just different things like that. Some more of the exotic things that are out there as far as products. So I hope you're enjoying this, guys. I do these to help people out. It's great to see a lot of new people popping up on YouTube now and all the other modeling forums getting into this hobby. 
And so that's why all of us, a lot of us out here do these videos to help you out. And uh, it's just uh, really good information and hopefully you guys can use it and it'll help you uh, enjoy the process of building your models. It should be fun and not frustrating. So we'll see you next time, everybody. Take care and happy modeling.